Hello everybody, Michael here with Do It Justice and welcome to the next video in our DIY solar power series. As you've seen me discuss in the last two videos, I've talked about questions you need to consider if you're asking yourself, is solar right for me? I've also talked about how to properly size your solar power system. And in the next four videos, I'm gonna discuss the four major components of the solar power system. And today I'm starting with the solar panels. As far as what I'm gonna discuss when it comes to solar panels, I'm gonna talk about the difference between monocrystalline and polycrystalline, which are the tried and true hard framed solar panels. I'm also gonna talk about the difference between those traditional panels and the newer flexible thin film panels. And the last thing I'm gonna talk about is how to wire your solar panels, whether you should wire them in series and parallel, and some advantages and disadvantages of each of those options. So let's jump right into monocrystalline versus polycrystalline. The major differences between these panels are gonna be the durability and looks, the efficiency and the size, as well as the cost per watt. When it comes to durability, both of these panels are extremely durable. They have an aluminum frame with a tempered glass top to cover all of the solar cells that produce the energy. Manufacturers generally cover these panels for about 25 years, which is actually quite a long time when it comes to product warranties. Now, when it comes to weather, these panels are extremely resistant to all types of weather, including high winds and even medium-sized hail. Uh, the general rule of thumb is if the weather can damage your roof, it can damage your panel. Okay, now let's talk about the efficiency and size of each of these panels. Monocrystalline panels are made with a higher grade of silicone, so generally they are uh, slightly more efficient than the polycrystalline panels. Now when I'm talking about efficiency, I'm talking about the percentage of energy that is converted into electricity. So when it comes to monocrystalline panels, on the high end it's about 20%, and when it comes to polycrystalline panels, on the high end it's about 17% or so. Because monocrystalline panels are slightly more efficient, that means that their footprint is just slightly smaller than a polycrystalline panel. So if you have a 150 watt monocrystalline panel compared to a 150 watt polycrystalline panel, the monocrystalline panel is just gonna be slightly smaller in dimensions, won't take up quite as much room as that polycrystalline panel. Now I'm gonna discuss the cost per watt for each of these panels, and in general, they are around the same, but because monocrystalline panels are produced with a higher grade of silicone, uh, that in turn means the manufacturing process is slightly more expensive, which then makes the consumer have to pay a little bit more for those products in general. Um, three years ago, when we bought our monocrystalline panels, uh, it was really good if you could get a panel for about a dollar per watt, but as time has gone on and as demand for solar has increased, those costs have gone down, so you should easily be able to find both a monocrystalline and a polycrystalline, a really high efficiency panel for about oh, 80 to 90 cents per watt. Now I'm gonna discuss the differences between those traditional panels that I just discussed and the newer flexible thin film solar panels. And again, I'm gonna talk about the durability and looks, the efficiency and the size and the cost per watt. So when it comes to durability, the tempered glass old school panels are, as I said, really, really durable. But when it comes to the flexible panels, they are not as durable. There are issues like cupping, uh, scratches, micro scratches, as well as tears that can happen uh, to the solar cells because they don't have the tempered glass protection on the top of them. Another thing that they don't have is a 25 year manufacturer's warranty. Generally they come with about a 10 year warranty because the manufacturers don't anticipate them lasting you that long. Now I could go into a bunch of different issues with these flexible panels when it comes to durability, but Gone With The Winds have created a really well put together video that discuss all of these issues, and I'm gonna link that video in the video description below, so go check that out, and that's gonna give you a really good idea of how durable these flexible panels are. Okay, now let's talk about the efficiency and the size. When it comes to efficiency, these flexible panels are not as efficient as the old school panels. So on a high end or the average for these flexible panels is about 13% efficiency, and that is not very good when you compare it to the 16 to 17% of the polycrystalline and the almost 20% of the monocrystalline. So again, the difference in efficiency is gonna make you have to buy more panels, or each panel is gonna be larger in size. It's gonna have a bigger footprint, bigger surface area to produce the same amount of energy. 
So now let's talk about the size between the two panels. The traditional panels are significantly bulkier and heavier than the flexible panels. Obviously, that's one of the major advantages that the flexible panels have over the traditional ones. And when it comes to it, just to give you an example, our 150 watt panels uh, that we have on our RV are 25 pounds and they are about three to four inches thick. To give you a comparison, you can get a thin film flexible panel, 150 watt panel that might be eight pounds and about an half an inch thick. So that's a significant difference. So if portability is a huge factor in your decision, definitely go with flexible over the hard panels. Now I'm gonna talk about the cost differences between the traditional panels and the flexible panels. And as you know, the traditional panels will run you anywhere from 80 to 90 cents per watt for a decent quality panel. And I did a quick search online to check the prices of the flexible panels. And on eBay, I found a 150 watt panel for about $190. That will run you about $1.30 per watt, which is a little bit more expensive, not too bad, but uh, a pretty significant amount more than the traditional panels. Now, since we're talking about efficiency and cost of the flexible panels, I should talk about an anomaly in all of this, and that's Solbian brand flexible panels. They just came out with the most efficient solar panels ever made, and they are 22.5% efficient. They are flexible panels, so that's really an amazing accomplishment, but the only thing is, is they are gonna run you an arm and a leg. They cost about $10 per watt. That's over 10 times the amount for any other solar panel that you can look for. And um, yeah, if you have healthy pocketbooks, definitely go for that option. But when it comes to just standard flexible and traditional panels, uh, traditional panels win out when it comes to cost. All right, guys, now we're gonna jump into the final topic and that has to do with wiring solar panels in series and or parallel. Now, this topic can be extremely confusing, and my goal with this little section is to try to make it as clear and easy to understand as possible. Before we jump into it, I wanna refresh our minds on the relationship between watts, volts, and amps. As you may remember from the previous video, we discussed how watts is equal to volts times amps. This equation is gonna be very important as we go through our scenarios today. So when I illustrate how to wire in both series and parallel, I'm gonna use our personal system as a reference to illustrate those concepts. So we have four 150 watt panels for a total of a 600 watt solar array. So we know we have 150 watt panels at 17.5 volts and that gives us about 8.6 amps of current on each of those panels. Now the first thing I'm going to talk about is wiring them in series. So when you're thinking about wiring your panels in series, you need to think of the panels as being tied into a string. You're taking each one of these 150 watt panels and you are marrying them or combining them into a singular 600 watt panel. And this is in an electrical sense, not in a physical sense. Obviously, they're gonna remain four separate panels, but in an electrical sense, you're gonna be wiring them into a single 600 watt panel. Now, let me talk about what changes with the solar array when you do that. So when you're wiring all of these panels together, you're gonna to take the positive line on one panel, wire it to the negative line on another, take that positive line, wire it to the next negative line, and so on and so forth. And so what you're left with is, like I said, a singular 600 watt panel that has a single negative wire coming out of it and a single positive wire coming out of it. What changes when you do this process is the voltage of your system. What you need to remember is when you wire things in series, the only thing that changes with the system is the voltage. So when you're wiring 450 watt, 17.5 volt panels together, you're gonna to take that 17.5 volts and multiply that by four, which will give you 70 volts. So now you have a 600 watt panel that is 70 volts. And if you reference that equation that we just talked about, watts equals volts times amps, you have your watts, which is 600. You have your volts, which is 70, but you don't have your amps. So to solve that equation very easily, you just take the watts, 600, divided by 
70, which is your volts, and that gives you 8.6 amps. So you'll notice when wiring it in series, the only thing that changes is your voltage. You have a 600 watt system at 70 volts and 8.6 amps. Okay, now that series is done, let's talk about wiring them in parallel. So when you're wiring the solar panels in parallel, it is almost the exact opposite. It actually is the exact opposite. Each of those panels, each of those 150 watt panels are going to remain separate panels. They're gonna be individual panels producing individual amounts of energy at 17.5 volts. The only thing that's gonna change when you wire all of these in parallel, meaning a positive and negative line comes out of one, a positive and negative line comes out of the next one, and so on and so forth, none of them are connected together. The only thing that changes is the amps of your solar array. So you still have a 600 watt solar array at 17.5 volts. And again, let's go back to our watts equals volts times amps equation. And if we need to find the amps for that system wired in parallel, you take the 600 watts and you divide that by 17.5 volts and that gives you 34.4 amps. Now that 34.4 is, as you might have guessed, 8.6 amps from each panel multiplied by four because we have four panels. So 8.6 times four gives you 34.4 amps. So the only thing that changes when you're wiring a solar system in parallel is the amps. You're quadrupling the amps. Okay, now that we understand how to wire in both series and parallel, what you need to do is figure out what the advantages and disadvantages are between those. Now, I'm gonna tell you the three major advantages and disadvantages between those two types of wiring configurations, and it has to do with wire sizing, shading issues, and the charge controller size. As far as wire sizing is concerned, if you don't know already, wire size is strictly correlated with the amount of amps running through that wire. So each wire is rated for a specific amount of amps or current flowing through it. So the smaller the amount of amps, the smaller the size of wire. So you'll remember that our 600 watt panels wired in series was 70 volts at 8.6 amps and that our 600 watt panels wired in parallel was 17.5 volts and 34.4 amps. Now the ones wired in series are going to be much smaller wires coming off those solar panels than the ones wired in parallel. Now when it comes to shading, that's where the advantages and disadvantages switch. The wiring it in parallel is a major advantage when it comes to shading. And I'll explain to you why because Remember how earlier when I was talking about wiring them in series, you're marrying them all together. So it's a singular unit. All of those panels are working together to produce that energy. Now, when one of those solar panels is shaded, the entire unit goes down. And this has to do with the fact that this is how solar panels work. If you have a single 150 watt solar panel and that solar panel is shaded, that panel stops producing energy. The only reason the entire system goes down when you're wired in series is because you've wired them all together. So each one depends on the other. Now, the, the reason it's the advantage when it comes to wiring them in parallel is because all of those panels are individual panels. So if one panel gets shaded, you're only down 25% of your solar array. So three of your four panels can still produce energy. The last thing I'm gonna talk about is the size of the charge controller. And if you remember when I was talking about how to properly size your system, there was that solar calculator. Well, when you think about the amperage coming from the solar panels when you wire it in series and the amperage coming from the solar panels when you wire them in parallel, it's a major difference. There are much more amps coming from the solar panels wired in parallel versus the solar panels wired in series. So the requirements for your charge controller are gonna be much higher the higher the amps are. So a solar array wired in parallel will need a much bigger charge controller than a solar array wired in series. Okay guys, I hope that wasn't that confusing and not to muddy the waters anymore, but there is a third option that you can do when wiring in series, like I said, and or parallel. You could wire them in series and parallel, meaning if we took 
two 150 watt panels and another two 150 watt panels and we wired those together in series, you would have two 300 watt 24 volt panels because we know that wiring them in series doubles the voltage. And then you would take both of those 300 watt 24 volt panels and you would wire them down in parallel. And as you know with wiring them in par parallel, we're going to double our amperage. So the specs for that system would be 600 watts at 35 volts and 17.2 amps. Whew, my brain is fried. <laughs> okay guys, that is a third option, but it kind of blends the uh, the best of both worlds for both series and parallel. And obviously I just use this one particular illustration as an example to explain these concepts to you. Of course, you can change the size of your solar array, you can change the number of panels, you can change all of that. So remember when I said solar was virtually limitless? This is exactly what I mean. It is very confusing, but once you understand all of the concepts, you'll realize how things kind of intertwine together and it'll start to make a lot more sense to you. So if this video doesn't make sense to you right now, I encourage you to go out and do more research so that you can come back and watch this video and really digest what I'm saying in it. By the way guys, if you're curious how I personally wired our solar panels, I will be discussing this in a future video when I take you guys on a complete walkthrough of our personal 600 watt system on our RV and I will discuss all of the thoughts and considerations that went into place when I was going to wire my solar panels. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did and potentially learned something along the way, hit that like button down below. It lets both Jenny and I as well as YouTube know that we're producing quality content. And if you have any questions on this topic, hit me up in the comments below. I'm gonna do my best to answer as many questions as I can. And if you guys know the answers, please do me a favor and help answer those questions in the, in the comments section below. And as always guys, I will see you on the next video.